All the miles, all the matches, the blood, the bumps and brutality in and out of the ring. The very definition of a traveling world champion competing across multiple territories, across multiple promotions, across multiple continents, day after day after day after month after month after year after year. He truly was the toughest man walking God's green earth. He earned that goddamn reputation. And even though all the pain and all the brutality eventually took its toll on him, he truly was the very definition of one goddamn tough son of a bitch. Harley Race absolutely left a hell of a goddamn legacy, and this episode encapsulated at least some of it. I'm Charles Rentham with my review, Dark Side of the Ring, The Life and Legends of Harley Race. Let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. And yeah, Harley Race, they couldn't cover everything in his career because they would have needed to probably have done at least two parts. I do want to <coughs> give one shout before I start talking about this, and I'm going to talk about something that was referred to in this original wrestling documentary piece about Harley Race, Darker Side of the Ring, they do some good stuff. They they really do. They, they I think it was like a 32, 35 minute piece on Harley Race and talked about a lot of stuff. And even though, you know, this, maybe the production budget wasn't nearly as big as Dark Side of the Ring, they actually did a lot of really good stuff and dive deep, including... One thing I'm going to talk about that they didn't include, but first, I did enjoy the fact that they talked about Harley Race's early life, but one thing I want to say that they should have mentioned was no mention of, well, one particular alleged, you know, assault that he was charged with in 1960 in Bradyville, Louisiana. They were both 17. Yeah, that kind of assault. He was acquitted, found not guilty, but... Hmm, little suspicious. Little suspicious, I say. That being said, who knows? We we won't ever know. Everybody involved in that thing, I would imagine, is either, <clears throat> well, not able to really talk about or dead. But, hmm, a little weird. So, wrestling, you know, obviously was something that dominated Harley's life. It really did. <laughs> he was, you know, one hell of a tough son of a bitch. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And he popularized some moves that some people took way, way too far. The diving headbutt. He even mentioned, you know, don't do this. It will fuck your neck and your back up. It will destroy you. And he was even doing it as safely as he could. He was often just coming off the second rope because if he came off the top rope in some promotions, it was a disqualification. <laughs> um... I did like the talking head. Same as it ever was, same as it ever was. Yes, I can't help but say that. Jim Cornette had some uh, good comments here. Trevor Murdoch was a good talking head here. Gerald Briscoe, Mick Foley. Uh, Danny Keever was a childhood friend. He only got to talk a little bit. I wish they would have talked to him a little more. Justin, his son, they did talk to, um, I believe, his only wife that's still alive, um, Yvonne. <coughs> who was a flight attendant, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but they did show some later footage of Harley Race doing shoot interviews and talking about the multiple screws and the replaced body parts that he had, and <clears throat> he paid the price. Jim Cornette talked about how it was, I think it was in 86 when he <clears throat> made an appearance, and he talked about how his, how his knee, it felt like, you know, a sandbag, like, because it was just powder. He basically was totally destroyed. And the fact is, you know, in 1943, when his career was over, he was, when his, like, entering career was over, he hadn't even been, he wasn't even 50 yet. But just the amount of bumps that he took. And he was tough. Like, there's no denying that. I mean, he mentioned now a Haku. So I would have loved to have seen Harley Race and Haku in their primes fight. Uh, a tag team might have destroyed the goddamn universe, or at least split it in two. But... Foley was inspired by Harley's style. The diving headbutt, again, that's just a dynamite kid to that. Look what happened to him. Benoit, look what happened to him. Brian Danielson, look what's happening to him. You shouldn't do the diving headbutt anymore. Just stop doing it. Stop. Don't do this anymore. Um, that His uh, childhood friend mentioned how he would let people punch him in the stomach, and even if it hurt, he would no-sell. He would just get to where he was you know, just fighting out of it, and they talked about, or he talked about how him and Harley used to, like, see some old wrestlers, like Bob Brown, Sonny Myers, Yukon Eric, it was nice to see some still shots, I don't think there's that much footage of them, um, 
he punched a principal out. And some of these stories, you actually don't know if Harley is, you know, being a little fanciful with some of this stuff, or they just took on a life of their own, and Harley just went with it. But the, you know, childhood friend talked about the principal punching, so there you go. Um, his, you know, only surviving wife, by the way, because his fourth wife, I believe, died in 2009. And Yvonne, she was, she was his third wife. <clears throat> you know, the first wife died in 1960. The car accident and everything. <laughs> but, you know, his ex-wife of 24 years, as long as he was married, because I think his second longest marriage was 16 years. And it was, look, it was what it was. I mean, it just, it, she, she was good. It was nice to hear from her. She seems like she's doing all right. He left home. Like, I don't think his family could take care of him. They, it was like a dirt poor farm. And he was working on the farm of Stanislav and uh, Valdix uh, Zabisco. I probably screwed that up. I apologize. But they basically agreed to train him. <laughs> and they trained him in the most legalized torture way, basically is how it was described. And he never quit. He did the carnival circuit. Eddie Sharkey was nice. Eddie Sharkey got, to, got a chance to do some... You know, talking here, that was really, really good. It's nice that he's still around because he's got to be in his 80s at this point. Uh, he was great on the Road Warriors uh, dark side that they did. Harley, you know, he was a plant if they couldn't find, like, a local to compete at the carnival. Then if Harley was the wrestler, then basically he would have to defend, you know, defend himself in a shoot. And the carnival stuff, that's basically how you earn your money. And he said, eh, you know, it ended up working out, but it was only just a few bucks a night. <clears throat> I did like the good stuff from, you know, Harley's interview pieces. And Gus Karras basically helped save his life <laughs> when, you know, Harley got in a bad accident. Um, you know, when Vivian, she was killed, uh, you know, in the car accident. And Harley's leg was nearly amputated. And Gus Karras said, the fuck you will. You will not take that. He took... Harley to another doctor to get a second opinion and not only saved his life, but saved his career. And I put those in, you know, other things because at the end of the day, it is wrestling as much as people enjoy it. It is still something where you're beating your body up and as long as you can have a healthy life. But hey, he didn't have to worry about that. He endured a lot of grueling physical therapy. They said, you never walk again. And if even if you can, never going to wrestle again. Harley's like, fuck you. I'll prove that I can. Yeah, his leg was basically fucked. Um, Yvonne was a flight attendant. Whirlwind romance. Parents didn't approve. Turns out the parents were right. <laughs> and Harley said, hey, reach in the back. There's a diamond ring. You know, or there's, you know, a bag in the back. And there was a diamond ring there. So they got married. I'm sure that Harley deep down did care for her. But also I think his respect for women was limited. I'm just going to be perfectly honest about that because I keep going back to that case that they went away from. You don't do that unless you want to exert your power over some people. But the teaming with Larry the Axe Henning, I wish they had been able to show some more stuff. <laughs> AWA, you know, stint was talked about briefly. I would have loved to have seen some footage of that stuff. He loved playing the heel. I mean, both were great heels, but uh, Harley loved playing the heel. <clears throat> The wife didn't like that because Yvonne, she had not liked that because if he's getting booed, <laughs> she didn't want to bring the son around because if it was going to be a bloodbath, she'd take him to the movies. And then there's the thing about where the fight in the restaurant, he got stabbed a few times, had to go to the hospital. And <clears throat> I think it beat, I think it beat up like a couple of the guys, but like had to go to the hospital because he got fucking stabbed. Even Harley Race can only take so much. And had friends and found out where the guy was living. And Trevor Murdoch told this. Like, oh, he shot with a pistol. <laughs> and Harley Race said, it wasn't a pistol. It was a machine gun. And, you know, I kind of almost want to believe that. Because Harley was just that insane. He, after that, what, after Vivian got killed, he would just constantly speed. J.J. Dillon talked about this on Legends of Wrestling Roundtable. Where he said, how fast can I go? If it's 60, I will respect your wishes. <laughs> 70, 120. And then you travel with him, he'd get a case of beer and the cooler and everything and that kind of stuff and just drink and, yeah, drinking and driving. I'm, I'm sure that Harley was just a joy to drive around with. Don't drink and drive, kids. What the fuck is wrong with you? 
Um, the cops basically would just end up saying, ah, you know, they come up like, you know, license a reg Harley? Harley race? Take it easy, Harley. Just slow down. The wife wasn't very happy with that. Yvonne actually probably might have been the highlight of this whole thing. So, <clears throat> Larry Henning ended up breaking his leg. I forget exactly how that happened. He was out for a bit. Harley uh, went into his singles run. I wish they had been able to show a little bit more stuff, but then again, footage is limited around this time. A lot of promoters did not save their film or tape. Or if they did, it is, uh, you know, collectors are still trying to get their hands on it. Uh, World Championship Contention, uh, they they showed some footage from Florida. And then the whole thing where Dory Funk Sr. didn't want Dory Funk Jr. to lose to a fellow babyface. That's why Jack Briscoe was not able to become the champion there. <clears throat> but Harley did become the champion. And then if I'm right, <laughs> I think Jack actually did become champion. And then... Terry Funk won it, and then I believe Terry lost it back to Harley Race in 77, if I recall correctly. I believe so. And because Har Harley's first run, I don't believe, lasted that long. They did skip over how he was the first, um, you know, Jim Crockett, you know, promotions NWA U.S. champion. That was a big goddamn deal. That That's right there, an establishment where he had already been a world champion. He already was seen as legit tough, and that gave it credibility. That was, I believe, the 1st of January, 1975. And that was that was pretty cool stuff. So he, he was basically, you know, in championship contention or the champion from 73 to 83. He did actually win it back from Flair on a New Zealand tour, but they didn't recognize that until years later. Because they wanted to have Flair's run be, you know, recognized going from Starcade to when he lost it to Kerry Von Erich. And then won it back 18 days later. But according to the Iron Claw, Kerry Von Erich suffered his leg injury the same night. Fucking inaccuracies. What the fuck? So, that being said. He bought into the Central States Territory. <laughs> he, the blood, the bumps, the bruises. The um, hour-long broadways. He was never home he was good to his kid when he was home, and he tried to be good to his wife. He spoiled her, but that's not that doesn't buy love. Like, spoils her with gifts. You need to actually be there. But yeah, he wrestled in Tokyo, and then would travel back and wrestle in St. Louis, and then wrestle in San Juan, and he would just go from flight to flight. And No wonder people go insane, you know, doing this kind of traveling. And then Vince basically wanted to ruin Starcade, so he offered Harley 250 grand. If Harley would no-show. Harley didn't want to do that. Yeah, the money was nice, but he said, I got to look at myself in the mirror. I got to do this. And I forget all the phrasing that has been said on podcasts. Jim Cornette talked about and other people have talked about. And Harley's done shoot interviews, or did shoot interviews. And Vince tried to leg dive him in the restaurant. Vince uh, got put in a front face lock and went to sleep. And Harley even said, you know, I could have just snapped his neck right there and solved the whole thing. He would have ended up, you know, saving people a lot of headaches and wrestling also would have been drastically different. Imagine that. Imagine if uh, Vince had just had his neck snapped right there. Harley wouldn't have gone away from murder. He would have said, he tried to attack me, so I took care of it. So nevertheless, how, how do you think wrestling would have been if Vince McMahon had died, you know, trying to leg dive Harley Race? Answers in the comments, please. So, respect for the business. Starcade goes off without a hitch, despite the fact that Gene Konitsky nearly ruined it, because Gene Konitsky is not a good referee. He's also not alive, so I probably should have said was not a good referee, but never a great world champion. So, <clears throat> Vince's expansion. Harley wasn't happy. He pulled out a pistol, was threatening to kill people, set the ring on fire, according to Hulk Hogan. That's just an extraordinary visual. Just And I know that Cornette and Brian last, they talked about Harley Race stories and just him setting the ring on fire. Just And the reenactment was so stupid. Harley flicks a cigarette in, and the ring goes up automatically. And I'm like, okay, was there gasoline, like, around the ring? <laughs> Was it a, a, Satushio, a Satushio Onita? Forget how you say his name. Was it an Onita production? <laughs> Why the ring go up like that? But it's just such a great idea that Har I mean, Mick Foley's like, does it even matter? It's just a you know cool story. And Harley lost money, you know, promoting your you know 
as part of Kansas City ownership, part of the Kansas City ownership, if I want to be grammatically correct or even close to coherent, I think it was like around $500,000, and unfortunately he had to keep wrestling. <laughs> so he went to the WWF, and he was there for three years, something like that, but um, for two and a half, I'm trying to remember the exact thing. But he was there for a bit. Uh, he was King Harley Race, which, you know, I really the only thing of note that he did was compete at uh, WrestleMania 3 against Junkyard Dog and made a black man bow to him in Detroit. Good stuff, Vince. Good, good stuff. Nice, nice to know how you respect me. I mean, I get the, I get that probably wasn't the connotation they were going for, except with Vince, you never know. But he was still doing the big bumps. He shouldn't have been. They they showed the table bump where the table bent, but the rod kind of you know you know ruptured stuff in his stomach, and he suffered a lot of injuries. Like I believe his lower intestines just exploded. His son thought he was dead. He was out for a while. Like he had two colostomy bags, he had three to four hundred stitches outside and in. <clears throat> and he did come back and I believe wrestled Haku at the 1989 Rumble <laughs> and may have wrestled a little bit on house shows. I he wasn't part of WrestleMania 5 that I recall. And he was gone from the company soon after. And then he would still compete gradually. He competed at the 1990 Great American Bash. He, uh, Tommy Rich, he wrestled Tommy Rich, I believe, if I remember right. And then he suffered a shoulder injury, and he really wasn't wrestling much anymore because he couldn't, because he was beat up and he was torn up. But he had a boat accident. <clears throat> Gonna need a bigger boat. Gonna need a bigger uh, pocketbook also. The injuries piled up. He, <clears throat> his wife was upset. Because he had been drinking, he had been calling her names and stuff like that, and then doing the and then did the boat accident, and he she called the psychiatrist. They, I don't know if he was still in the hospital or what, but she said, "What do I do?" They said, "Back up your car, get your stuff, and get out of there. Back your car up to the house, get your stuff, get out of there. Um, back it up so you can just drive straight out instead of having to back the car up." I guess. <laughs> um, she filed for divorce. Uh, there was a call from a woman, you know, in Wichita that has 16 year old kid that Harley had knocked up apparently and that that was legit. She couldn't really forgive him, but no, he didn't have to pay alimony. Why? Because he's Harley race. I'm not saying he's the only one to have kids out of wedlock and cheat on his wife and everything, but kind of lend more credence to that, uh, you know, assault case that they left out. Isn't it? Harley race is still legit tough. Troubled, I guess, would be the best way to describe his home life. There was the talk about that movie, War of the Roses. The divorce was War of the Races, according to the uh, son. It was the wife, you know, Yvonne feels bad because she wishes that the son would see her side. She didn't want the marriage to end badly, but she had to do, she had to do what she could for herself. I don't blame her. There was a lawsuit, you know, involving the boat accident. One of the participants, or one of the victims, had two broken legs, and she was still in a wheelchair. He had to pay $250,000, basically, for the settlement. She was asking for $10 million, but he had to pay two hundred fifty grand. And next week is going to be Chris Colt. That ought to be interesting. And then he went back to WCW to manage Vader, and he was doing good stuff. I actually liked him managing Vader. I do remember something that Foley mentioned about the feud with Vader. And he said, if you don't hit him as hard as you can with that shovel, I'm going to come back and hit you. And so he laid it into Vader, and it was great. It was on WCW Saturday night because this is pre-Nitro stuff. But he thought Mick was crazy with all the bumps he was taking. And then I believe he had a car accident, I think, in 95, and he wasn't able to travel as much. I know he appeared... On a Nitro, I think it was the Nitro where Brett and Benoit wrestled to honor Owen Hart. <laughs> and then, he was on Exposing uh, Wrestling's Greatest Secrets, or whatever the name of that particular show was. And they didn't do a good job, uh, you know, shadowing him. Like, I remember watching that show, and I mean, I was thinking that looks familiar. But it was back in 98, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> but, 
he did it for money, and I can't really fault him there. By that point, the cat was out of the goddamn bag with wrestling anyway. I'm not excusing the fact as to why people might have felt, you know, slighted there, but it really was out of the bag. So then the Harley Race School, uh, Hall of Fame 2004, nothing better than competing under those bright lights. It doesn't get much better than this. And he passed at 76 in 2019. Um, his wife, well, his his last wife died in 2009. Trevor Murdoch even said, you know, you don't cry because that's just who you are. It doesn't mean you don't care. And it was nice to hear from Yvonne. She was talking about how, how you know, he was a hell of a tough guy in wrestling. And he just wasn't meant to be a husband. He just wasn't meant to be that. I think she was being as nice as she could to basically say he was abusive without actually saying it. What is his legacy? His legacy is being the toughest wrestler to walk God's green earth. He also skated on a lot of shit that other people wouldn't have. That being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin. I'll see you soon.